Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome to Water Wednesday. My name is Yi Ling Zhuang, the Water Resources Regional Specialized Agent with University of Florida IFAS Extension. If this is the first time you turn into Water Wednesday, you may wonder what is Water Wednesday? So for Water Wednesday, it's a Facebook live series about Florida's precious water resources and what we can do to protect it. Every, um, every Wednesday afternoon, two o'clock Eastern time, we will live stream our talk for about 20 to 30 minutes. We will also post recordings on YouTube channel. So for those, if you cannot attend our live session, you can also watch the recordings on YouTube channel. So if you like our Water Wednesday series, please give us a thumb up. And I will also post a link of our survey in the chat box. We will really appreciate if you can take the short survey and tell us what you think about Water Wednesday and how we can improve our Water Wednesday series. And for today's talk, it's a very popular talk. And actually, it's a part two talk of our last month's Water Wednesday. It's a how to build your own ring barrel. So let's welcome our guest speaker, Tina McIntyre, the Florida Friendly Landscaping Agent in Seminole County, and Krista Stump, the Natural Resource Agent in Osceola County. Am I right, Krista? I feel like I'm always getting a little bit nervous while I'm introducing my speakers. Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm from Osceola. Yeah, Osceola County. I think I got that a little bit nervous the last time too when I introduced the speaker because I say, hey, Florida, we have 67 counties which means we have more than 67 extension offices. So now let's welcome our guest speakers, Ms. Tina and Ms. Krista to show us how to build your ring barrel. And meanwhile, if you have any questions, please just leave it in the chat box. They will answer your questions at the end of this presentation. All right, welcome. Thank you so much, Yilin. So welcome everybody today to another installment of Water Wednesdays. Like Elin said, we're going to be talking a little bit further in depth about rain barrels today. So, um, you know, this is really uh, Florida friendly landscaping. Um, water is a water program. And so we're going to talk about the nine principles. We'll put them up on your slide there. And so you can see the nine principles and the ones that we're really focusing in on today are gonna to be watering efficiently, reducing stormwater runoff and protecting the waterfront. So rain barrels, which I have right here, actually show you and help you to do all three of those things. The, the nine Florida friendly principles are actually in the Florida law. And so we, we typically will see, you know, um, there's a, a right that you have to be able to install a rain barrel so if you do live in an HOA, you can probably um, talk to them that you should be able to install it. They might have certain aspects of it, the color, the location. Um, but again, it is Florida law, so you should be able to move forward with installing it regardless of where you live in Florida. Next slide. Thanks, Krista. So why rain barrels? Well, um, as we covered in our last installment of Rain Barrel Basics, we on June 3rd, we talked about the benefits of rain barrels and how to use a rain barrel. So, um, and Yilin can put in the chat a link to our YouTube video, our Facebook video, so you can watch that first episode if you missed anything. But I'll do a quick recap here. Basically, everybody in Florida pretty much gets the water that we use for drinking, for uh, washing our cars, and for irrigating our lawns from the Florida aquifer, which is below our feet. Um, it's an amazing, vast, cavernous system that has fresh water that we can drill wells into and be able to, you know, utilize that water. But again, it's a finite resource, and so we want to do things to protect and conserve it. Installing a rain barrel is definitely one of those things. So with a rain barrel, you're going to use less water from the aquifer so that we can have lush, billowing stream, uh, springs, which make our streams. Um, I know in Seminole County, we have Okaiba Springs and lots of wonderful, uh, beautiful springs throughout Central Florida. Those come billowing out from our aquifer. And so by installing a rain barrel, we're gonna use less water from our aquifer. 
we're going to reduce that stormwater runoff. So instead of making more stormwater picking up pollution, we're going to have that water right here in our rain barrel. It helps to prevent erosion. I know a lot of times around gutter areas, around our home, we can get a lot of erosion with these heavy, heavy rains. Well, the rain barrel is going to help you. Hi, Tina. Sorry to interrupt. There's a gray rectangle on the right side of the slide. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if you can see it's where the mouse is. That gray. It does, yeah. I'm not sure. I don't think it's going to affect us too much. So hopefully as we go on, it should be okay. Um, uh, all right. Just yeah, go so away. I'm not sure. Ignore the gray square. If it blocked the words, uh, just let us know. I will jump in again. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you, Yilin. Mm -hmm. um, if there's any words blocked, I'll just be sure to make sure to incorporate it verbally um, so that you guys know exactly where, where we're at. Um, but, you know, the IT issues, I think that should be okay. Um, so, and then one other thing too, um, in terms of the benefits of rain barrels, they help us save money on our water bills and we can irrigate our plants. So, you know, in the dry months, March, April, May, we have this water from our past rainfall to be able to irrigate our plants. Now, if you're interested in irrigating edible plants, I highly recommend watching our last episode um, from June 3rd. And that's because I cover that there are certain aspects of your roof, your gutters, and um, your landscaping and edible plants that you really have to know um, before irrigating edible plants. So go back, watch it, see if you check the box to be able to qualify, um, you know, so that you can use the water on edible plants or maybe not. Um, so let's go ahead and start today, which is basically creating a rain barrel. So the first question we always get when we talk rain barrels is where do I get a barrel? So um, a lot of the times you're gonna wanna um, reach out to certain drums distributors. So if you're searching in your search engine, you're gonna wanna put in drums for sale, barrels for sale, and be very specific that you're looking for a food grade barrel. You don't wanna get anything that's harbored pesticides or gas or any kind of toxic materials. Um, you know, these drums are used to ship globally all kinds of products. You're looking for food grade. So that's things that had pickles or olives or sauces, you know, things that we would eat. So um, start off looking online to see if you have a local drum or barrel distributor in your area. You can usually acquire the barrel for fairly, you know, affordably and then make your own barrel. So we're going to show you a quick little video, but just to give you a quick rundown of how to make turn a barrel into a rain barrel. Well, first you wanna clean out the barrel really well. So if it had you know, soda in it, it could be really sticky. So you wanna just give a thorough br brushing to the interior and exterior of the barrel. You wanna identify the location that you're gonna be installing the, bar the barrel. And we'll talk more about installation later. Then you're gonna saw out the top of the barrel and remove, cause sometimes they actually have fully enclosed um, some of them are actually open face on top, but most of them are fully enclosed. So you're gonna wanna actually use a, a saw to remove that upper portion. portion. You're gonna wanna drill out the spigot holes. So this is the overflow valve, and then you'll also have your spigot. So you're gonna wanna use um, a nice drill bit to be able to kind of get those holes there, the perfect size. And then of course, insulation. So now we're gonna show you a quick video, show you how to actually make a rain barrel and be sure to have your pencil ready because we'll go over the specifics of drill bit size, things like that, to make sure that you get that three quarters of an inch. And your patience while she's uh, loading the video is appreciated, so. Tina, can you guys see the video? Um, it's not playing, it's a uh, gray box. Okay, let's see if it plays, here we go. With all this rain, it's time to build a rain barrel. We the can barrel. hear it, but we cannot it's see it. Around. All right, one second, everybody. Okay. 
There we go. Thank you, Krista. And thank you for your patience, everyone. We're asking our computers to do a lot here with Zoom and Facebook and Without a screen, it's time to build a rain barrel. A rain barrel will reduce stormwater runoff and save you water. First, you need a barrel. We use food grade 55 gallon drums. Next, we saw off the lids. You'll want to put your barrel under a downspout or at a point where your roof collects a lot of water. overflow valve near the top of the barrel. You use it to connect to more rain barrels or screw in a hose so that extra water will flow to another part of the yard. spigot we use 3 quarter inch adapters and a 15 16 inch paddle for the drill. You will have to enlarge the hole slightly for the adapters to fit in. Last we add a screen to keep out insects and debris. That's all there is to it. Visit our website to learn more about Rain Barrel Workshops. This has been a Florida Yards and Neighborhoods program. Excellent. Thank you, Krista. So what she used there on the top of the barrel was a sawzall. And of course you wanna have a buddy help you just to make sure everything stays stable. And um, for the, again, the adapter, the actual um, you know, um, spigot that you're putting in, it's gonna be that three quarters of an inch. And the, the drill bit is five sixteenths of uh, a drill bit. So it's gonna be in that nice broad drill bit. Um, that's going to create a nice hole and you want to be careful drilling that hole because if you get it too big it your spigot's going to leak but you can use that silicone around the spigot um, let it dry and it'll be um, nice and flush so yeah so now we're going to talk about how to install your rain barrel so that now that you've acquired created your rain barrel how do we install it and where is the best spot so I do have some pictures to accompany um, my barrel here. So I'll be showing you on the video or on the, in the PowerPoint, but also here in person. So the first step is um, actually finding a location so that you know that you're gonna be getting enough water in your barrel. A lot of people ask me, can I just put it in the backyard? Does it have to be close to the house? If it's in the yard, it will collect the water. But if you think of one couple little drops going into the barrel, is not gonna be as vast as the concentrated amount coming from your roof. So you really wanna um, you know, put it next to your roof so that you can harness from the gutter system. Even if you don't have a, gov a gutter, using the corner of your house is still gonna be better than um, just putting it out in the open, okay? So once you've selected a good location and you're gonna be utilizing the gutter, you wanna um, actually start to remove part of that gutter. So I just cut this flush at the level that I knew that I wanted. So I, I added in um, the height that I wanted to have the barrel at. It's about just a little over a foot. And then you have to incorporate the entire barrel. And then you have this corrugated gutter. And so ultimately you're cutting the gutter fairly high up. You can see it's about shoulder length. You're gonna saw that gutter off, use the, the little, if you have um, the straps to hold that on, open those up, remove that gutter out. Next slide, please. 
And then you're gonna begin actually raking and leveling the area. So you've removed the gutter out, you're gonna begin raking away any debris, um, you know, and leveling that out real nice. Next slide. And then what I did is actually just use some old wood that I have just to create a nice foundational layering, um, you know, cause it was kind of uh, soft and spongy in some spots. So, you know, if the wood breaks down, that's quite all right, because I've actually added after the wood, some really nice pavers. So you can see, um, you can see here, I have the wood underneath and I have some really nice big block pavers. And then the, the uh, kind of what I call the Jenga uh, pavers on top. And so you always wanna be sure when you're laying those pavers that you do it one, one direction and then in the other direction. So you can see in the picture, some are facing this way, then the next layer is kind of facing this way and so on. So that it kind of gives it more um, security and um, kind of interweaving. And you can use a variety of pavers, that's perfectly fly, fine. You just want to use a level when you're done just to make sure that it's it's nice and straight. Next slide. So then we're going to be adding our barrel on top of that. So, um, you know, you just want the barrel to be nice and empty at this point, nothing in it. You don't have to have any of the gadgets really uh, adhered to it, except for maybe your outflow valve and your spigot. You're going to just put it right up on those pavers. And next slide. Then you're gonna be adding in your uh, mesh, okay? So you can see here I've added this mesh and this is just basic screening mesh um, cut so that it is much bigger than the outside of the barrel so that it can safely and securely keep out mosquitoes, um, debris, things like that, okay? And you're gonna secure that with either one to two bungee cords. So I have one nice big bungee cord here that um, is adhering this securely. Now you wanna make sure it's nice and taut because if it's not, if it tends to push in, then you're gonna get some pooling and the mosquitoes can then lay their larva in that little pooling. So always check, make sure your bungee cord over time isn't getting kind of loose um, and that your screening is staying nice and taut. Okay, next slide. And then we're gonna go into the gutter. So this is a really helpful piece to be able to bring the gutter away from the house and distribute the water into the barrel. And so you can see, it's actually just a few inches away from my house. My hand fits back here nicely. And so you have this corrugated gutter and then you have your leaf catch at the end of that. So any um, leaves or debris that scoot through um, my gutter system are going to be captured and you can see it actually has one right here. Um, they're going to be captured in that little metal leaf catch. Okay, uh, so we have uh, the leaf catch and then the screen to prevent any kind of um, gravel from your roof or um, leaves or, you know, different dead insects or who knows what's up there from actually entering your barrel. Okay. Next, uh, one other thing about when you adhere this gutter system, um, the corrugated gutter to your existing gutter, is you wanna make sure that it goes inside. So the existing gutter will actually go inside and the new corrugated gutter will actually surround that. So if you try to do it the other way, it's gonna be really um, tight and it really probably won't fit. So the existing gutter goes inside of the corrugated gutter system. So you can see this is actually inside this brown one. And you could get, you know, I didn't really matter what color Home Depot had, but of course you could get matching colors if that's important to you. And next slide, Krista, please. Yeah, and so there's again, just a close up of that um, leaf, the leaf catch, it will just fit right up into that gutter and it holds tight. We've had several storms since I've installed this, no problem at all. Okay, next slide. And there's your finished product. So you can see, um, I think I installed this barrel in about an hour. Um, you know, it takes a little configuring to get everything nice and level and then build up your, you know, make sure you have enough pavers to build up that platform. Now, one other thing about that platform is you wanna make sure that it's high enough because these are gravitationally fed. So meaning that there's no pump, there's no pressure, um, you know, 
unless you elevate it. So if you have it really high, your pressure is going to be even higher. Um, if you only have it on the ground, it's going to be much lower. So that's why we elevate it so that we can get that nice gravitational flow. Okay, next slide. Okay, and again, I just wanted to show you um, a quick close up of the outflow valve. So you can see that here. Um, this basically, I could just take this off if I wanted to quickly, you know, if we have a, a hurricane coming our way, I wanna, you know, drain it. Or if I wanted to link this to another rain barrel, I could easily do that. And you can see in some of the pictures here, it's showing you how to actually adjust it. Um, and, you know, you can link several together. So 55 gallon drum. You add two, now you have 110 gallons of, you know, cistern capacity, and you can increase that. Um, you know, what I really recommend is maybe not more than three. So you want to maybe look at other spots you could install if you want to even do more than that. Um, now, we also get the question of, can I link a hose to this or a soaker hose or things like that? Most people tend to typically just fill up their their little hand watering here. So you can see I have a couple um, for me and my family to be able to just kind of fill them up. The pressure is pretty good. I'll show you guys here. So you can see that's pretty good pressure for just being elevated just over a foot. And then again, it, it's full because we've been having so many storms. And so that extra fullness will create pressure as well. So, um, you know, you can hook up, say a soaker hose or a regular hose but you're gonna to wanna to elevate it even more. So, because you're gonna need that gravity to really flush out through the end of the hose. You're not gonna have pressure like you would with a regular, you know, potable water hose or, you know, even on your reclaimed or whatever else you have. Um, so really, I think the best way to use it is just hand watering, unless you're gonna elevate it even more and create like a soaker hose system potentially. Um, so with that, we have a few questions um, kind of Q&A for you guys to talk about maintenance. So um, feel free to put your questions in the chat. Yi Lin will also send a link to you guys if she hasn't already probably um, to our previous Water Wednesdays so you can learn more about Rain Barrel Basics. So go back and watch episode one. And now we'll get into frequently asked questions about maintenance. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of these frequently asked questions. As Tina said, feel free to add any of your own questions into the chat and we'll address them um, time permitting. So first of all, a lot of people ask, and I think I've already seen it in the Facebook live chat right now, is how often should we clean your rain barrel? Because it's important that we're protecting the water you know, from bacteria or debris. So it's recommended that we try to at least clean it out annually two years is even better. So you wanna clean it out one to two times per year. Now, one of the best and biggest things that you can do to keep your um, rain barrel clean is actually look at your gutters. So do regular gutter maintenance. And that is what will help you keep all of that leaf litter and debris from coming down. Um, also, this during the spring and the fall time, we get a lot of pollen, right? And so that would be perfect time to coincide your cleaning with the pollen to keep it clear of all of that. Now, if you're not using it as regularly, you may have some standing water in there, or you may also have some algae growth. If that occurs, um, you need to clean out the barrel, so completely clear out the water, and then you can use a very dilute bleach solution to, to wash it out and try and get rid of some of the bacteria and the algae. After you do that, though, you want to make sure you rinse it out very well, and you'll be rinsing it and then dumping it in a household drain because you don't want to be um, dumping all that bleach water outside. Another question we get, and this is very important, especially down here in Florida, is we have this big barrel of standing water, and so mosquitoes can be an issue. Now, of course, you saw Tina did a great job showing her mosquito netting. First and foremost, you want to make sure that netting is really secure, like she mentioned. But there's other things that we can do um, around our home to help um, prevent mosquitoes. Look around your house, look around your yard. Is there any other standing water sources you can remove? So this diagram shows some, some common, so maybe not thought of 
places to look, for instance, if there are any toys or flower pots outside, any buckets of water, any low standing areas in your yard, try and address those first and that'll help with your mosquito issues. Just like with keeping the rain barrel, barrel clean, it's really important that you clear the gutters because that's actually where they harbor a lot of mosquitoes. So clear those out regularly. You'll be keeping your rain barrel clean and also preventing mosquitoes. And as I mentioned, if you have any tires, buckets, saucers, um, grills, a wheelbarrow that's outside, um, remove water from those sources. Also look at your bird baths. You wanna rinse those out regularly, keep them nice and clean. And if you have any bromeliads in your landscape also. However, if um, it's still an issue with mosquitoes, just check that netting regularly. You may have some gaps in there. You may need to be cleaning it more regularly. You can also use a mosquito dunk. Um, it's also called a donut and you can see why in this picture. And that is these round cakes of a natural bacteria called BTI and it helps to prevent the mosquitoes. And it's not harmful to beneficial insects. So that's something that you can find in you know, any of your lawn and garden stores. However, you can also just add a very small amount of oil. So I'd recommend about two teaspoons um, for a 55, a standard size gallon drum. What this does is it causes this film of oil on the surface and that surface tension makes it difficult for mosquitoes to land and then breed on. So that's a, a tip to help prevent mosquitoes. I've also seen this question in the chat and it's an excellent question, especially right now we're in our hurricane season and we may have a tropical storm coming our way. So what do we do down here in Florida um, for hurricane prep? So what you wanna do is empty your rain barrel. And then once you empty it, then you can store it in a shed or um, in a garage or another secure area. Try and secure it so it's not going to be out in the storm. But you have the gutter. So you're going to have to reattach downspouts because with all of that heavy rain, you need to divert that water away from your house. You don't wanna just fall in right there because it can do some harm to your structure um, and your foundation. You can also um, include uh, another corrugated pipe like this one seen in the picture here, and that'll divert the water even farther away as needed. So that is an option. That's right. So Chris, I was just going to add that I would just essentially remove the leaf catch, empty the barrel, remove the barrel, and then I could even just reattach my existing gutter, um, kind of scrunch this all the way up, re you know, put in my other, um, the existing gutter down here and then um, kind of close off that last little screw so that the gutter is then reattached. Awesome, yeah. And it's excellent to see Tina, she's showing you um, on her screen there how you would do it if you have a rain barrel at home. So look at her screen if you want to know what she's talking about specifically. Um, so those are some of the major questions we have. I wonder if we have any other question you guys would like us to address here in the next couple minutes. Yes, we do. We do have a lot of questions here on the Facebook page. Um, I'm looking at that. I think you guys already addressed some questions. Something like, how about a hurricane season? Like, should I remove my rain barrel during hurricane season? Um, other questions is how often should we clean that? I think you two already well covered these questions. Uh, let me from the beginning and read those questions. Uh, the first question was about what tools you need to build your ring barrel. Um, I believe Tina already mentioned uh, what kind of tools you need to build that yeah. ring barrel. Would you want I to just do a quick uh, recap? So essentially, um, if it's a fully enclosed drum that you're starting off with, you're going to want to drill, or I'm sorry, saw out the top. So let me actually just see if I could take this off for you guys and kind of show you um, how I've, you know, essentially drilled away. You can see it's kind of, um, you know, rough right here. So the drill, um, the saw, excuse me, the sawzall has actually cut out this barrel and opened it up. So you're definitely going to need a sawzall. Um, you're going to need a drill drill and that's perfect uh, 15, 5 16th, 5, 5, is it 16th, I think, um, drill bit. And then um, 
you're going to need some silicone. So just looking at a close up of this uh, spigot here, there's some silicone that you put inside and outside. And on the other side of this, there's actually a little um, plastic kind of, uh, I guess, kind of nut that will um, help to secure that to the other side. So um, not too many, just really a drill, a sawzall, the right um, pieces so that the, the spigot and the outflow valve are that three quarters of an inch, which is fairly standard hose, you know, stuff. Um, and then the 5 16 drill bit that you'll get. Um, that's pretty much it. So not a whole lot. Um, some really good, you know, silicone and you should be well on your way. Awesome, thank you. Um, and sorry, Krista, I stopped sharing your screen. Um, then we can show Tina's image better so the audience can see the ring barrel info. I, uh, I will post uh, YouTube's uh, contact info in the chat box. Um, the other question I'm looking at here, um, I think Tina also addressed that, but would you say that uh, just uh, maybe a quick recap, why do we mm -hmm. want to raise up uh, the ring barrel? Why do you want to keep it high? Yeah, so you wanna do at least a foot. Um, you can see here I have pretty much about a 12 inches to a foot um, where the bottom of the barrel is starting. Um, and probably a little bit more if I was to count it from the actual base of the soil. So the higher that you have the barrel, the more gravitational, you know, kind of push and pressure you're going to get when you actually open this outflow discharge. Okay, so, but you can see it's flowing pretty good for that one foot in height. You really don't need to do too much more. So you have to consider that the higher it is, kind of the more dangerous it is. And if you have children around like I do, you know, you want to be careful and mindful of that as well. Great, thank you. And some other questions. So it's, uh, what's the average cost of a ring barrel? It really depends. Um, you know, I think if you were gonna buy like a totally, you know, ready-made one, um, it could be 50 to $60. Some of them are really beautifully painted, um, you know, but if you're gonna buy the drum and make it yourself, usually it starts at about 20, 20 bucks. Um, you know, I haven't really shopped around for an actual barrel in a while. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a anonymous donor um, to us at Extension in Seminole County, but a lot of the, um, sorry, the, the Florida friendly bird is, is getting in the video here. Um, so, you know, but it shouldn't be too much to acquire the food grade barrel. And then, you, you know, you just need those tools to be able to make it yourself. So, but when they're done, they can go at different markets and festivals for, you know, $60 or so, you know, and upward. So they do get pretty expensive um, and decorative and all that. Um, but, you know, you can make them yourself fairly cheap too. Yeah, because I know it's uh, some extension offices also selling ring barrels. So you can check out your local extension offices if uh, they have uh, already well made ring barrel. So just like Tina said, it will be already well assembled with uh, like all the hardware you need. Maybe probably it's also the stand. Um, I think it's uh, actually just one quick thing on that, um, Yilin. So we do typically do a couple of rain barrel classes every year. Um, and we do a rain barrel giveaway with the registration for the class. This year, we're not doing it because of the COVID. However, um, you know, even if the extension offer, office offers the barrels, they typically have to be in conjunction with a class for tax purposes. So we're not able to operate like a store and just kind of sell, you know, the barrels. They do typically have to be kind of packaged with a class. Um, so, you know, if you are calling your extension, just be mindful that unless they're offering an in-person class, which is fairly unlikely right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're probably not going to be able to just sell a barrel, unfortunately. Yeah, that's true. We always, uh, if you don't know UFI first extension, we provide education. So our mission is to provide science-based education to everyone. So um, they may, just like Tina said, there may be some like workshop related to that. Uh, 
And I know for Orange County, you can also contact Orange County. It may be only utilities, because uh, for Orange County Extension, their horticulture agent is teaching ring barrel class. So you have to register, and as a giveaway, you can get a free ring barrel. I will post the details uh, in, on my Facebook page. It's like if you live in Orange County. Uh, I'm not sure about all the details, uh, so please also keep in mind uh, it may be a little bit different. And if we keep moving on our questions, uh, um, let's see. I think I have another question, but I think I missed it. Um, it's how long can the, can the water, uh, how long can the water keep? Water from summer rains last into the dry season, assuming the volume is still there. Yeah, so I would say, you know, you want to be trying to utilize your barrel water, um, you know, so in October, September, you know, we do start to taper off on the rainy season. You want to be using that because it will refill with each rain and um, the water can last, you know, if you're just using it for plants, it's, it's going to be fine as long as you're making sure that the mosquitoes aren't getting in there. Um, you know, the water will be fine to utilize on plants. I also actually use my barrel water to kind of rinse off my tools before I actually, you know, do like a soapy wash, just like a pre-wash. If you have, you know, a cat box or, you know, you're cleaning out your chicken um, trays or different things from your animals as like a nice pre-wash so that when you go to the sink, you're just using a quick um, soap up. Um, you know, it can be used for other things than irrigating. So you can, you know, even I was just kind of rinsing my, um, my little, the outside of my uh, watering can kind of got dirty. So, you know, you can use it to kind of pre-clean things in the yard. Um, but again, if that water's stagnating and it has algae, algae overgrowth, a little bit of algae might be normal. You know, I think mine even has a little bit starting to grow, but if it's inundated with algae, the plants probably won't mind, but you want to keep it clean in there. Like Krista said, one to two times per year cleaning is good. Great. So you just covered the next question. It's like, how do I keep the algae and other things so growing in the barrel? Um, and I also, yeah. I'm glancing through all the questions uh, in the chat box. Uh, some it's, uh, I already took the liberty to answer that. Uh, uh, the question related if you can use a ring barrel water to water like your food garden. So last uh, part one ring barrel series, uh, Tina already mentioned, we, um, we don't suggest to use ring barrel water for any edible plants uh, due to the water quality issue. So I post the link uh, here, I mean, in the comments, uh, you can go back to watch uh, the recording. Mm. Yeah, it really comes down to what kind of roof you have, what kind of gutters you have, um, and then what edibles you're going to be irrigating. So um, go back and watch that last video because it really a nice in-depth walkthrough of all the types of roofs, the types of gutters, um, and then the types of vegetable crops. And so you really have to check a lot of boxes to be able to get, the, you know, irrigate those edibles. So it's, right. it's not always a yes. Exactly. So always be cautious. Um, the other question is also related to algae. So, uh, well, I, I missed it. Okay, I find it. Will algae get into the barrel water at all? Yeah, so um, algae is a normal part of a lake system. Um, and, you know, we're going to see algae tend to just kind of appear in these barrels. It's normal, um, you know, like I said, I think I even see a little algae kind of growing on the side. It's like if you don't clean your fish tank after a little while, you're gonna have that algae buildup. Um, you could even, I had a friend that said he actually put some mosquito fish in the tank to eat any, you know, larva and algae and stuff like that. So, you know, obviously they can, it's now a, a aquarium system that he's creating. Um, so I don't know that we necessarily recommend that, but it was an interesting idea. And so, you know, water is going to tend, especially with this heat, and then you are going to have slight nutrients. So nitrogen is kind of a very interesting chemical compound where, you know, and where we have atmospheric deposition. So what that means is nitrogen actually exists in our atmosphere. 
and it's going to deposit itself into this water that's in the rain barrel. And so it's going to change forms and kind of get in there. And that nitrogen is going to feed the algae. You don't have to have any nutrients that you're injecting into the barrel or fertilizer getting in. That natural nitrogen is going to get into the barrel and it's going to be a food source for that algae. And so, um, you know, it's a natural part of it. Just again, going back to that one to two times per year maintenance so that you can um, be sure to, to scrub it out. You know, you're gonna wanna get a nice little brush, bristle brush and just scrub it out, um, clean it out, you know, pressure washer, whatever you choose to use to um, clean it one to two times a year. But otherwise the algae really is, is fine as long as it's maintained. Great. So yeah, you can see it's a Florida's weather and with the nutrient algae will be hard to avoid. Keep it clean, just like how you remove, uh, keep mold outside your house. Um, this, I, I saw a question here, actually it's a really common question. I hear the question a lot. It's uh, if I don't have a gutter system, can my wing barrel still work? Yeah, that is a great and a very frequent question. Um, so you can, um, what I'd recommend is the next time we have a deluge, which could be in a matter of an hour or two, if you're close to where I'm at, um, of, of rain, then you're gonna be just, just go out as long as it's safe um, and it's not lightning, just go walk around your house, put on a rain jacket, go walk around your house and see which corner of your house is, is tends to get the most flow. So it's gonna to go to one side or another, north to south, whatever it is, that's probably where you wanna install your barrel. So again, you can, there's nothing you know, telling you you can't just put it in the backyard in an open area, but you're not gonna get as much use, as much rain, as much you know, real uh, benefit as the bar barrel will create as harvesting the water that's sheet flowing off of your roof. So you definitely want to you know, utilize that corner of your roof that even if you don't have gutters, the water's going to tend to kind of flow in that direction, figure out where that is, and then go from there with the installation. Great. Uh, the, I have a question here. It's also about bleach, because uh, I think Krista mentioned that you need to add a little bit of bleach when you clean uh, and to keep the water clean. So um, can you remind us how much bleach you need when you clean your barrel? And also it's, uh, can you put bleach in the water to against the algae grow? So I'm gonna pull Krista in on that one as well, but for, and the last video that we covered, um, we did talk about utilizing bleach for, to kill any bacteria, to be utilizing the water on edible crops. That's gonna be a different amount. Um, and I can't remember, I think it's a teaspoon, but go back and watch that last video to be sure you're using the right amount of bleach. That's in relation to edible plants for maintenance. I think Krista had that in her slide. Mm -hmm. um, Krista, do you remember exactly how much bleach uh, for maintenance? To, yeah, to kind of so release. it'll depend on, and first of all, yeah, I think it is one teaspoon for the edible, which is usually about like the small cap on a bottle of bleach. Um, but for maintenance, it's going to depend on, you're, you don't need to fill up the entire barrel with water, obviously, to clean it out. So what you're going to do is make up a 10% bleach solution, which is pretty common in most things you clean. But after using that, you really want to rinse it out very well. Great. Yeah. So maybe even just a, a spray bottle that you have, you fill it up 90% with water and that last 10% of the bottle, you just put um, bleach in. And so that would be your 10% bleach solution. And then you could just spray the bottle down. Um, you know, you can obviously use soap, but when you're doing that, you want to make sure that that water then goes into a drain and that you're not putting the bleach and soapy water into the environment. Um, not a good thing, not a Florida friendly thing. So rinse it off, um, put it in, um, you know, your sink drain or your, you know, your bathroom tub or something like that so that it can then go for treatment, unlike, you know, the local storm drain. Yeah, another thing I do want to recommend, uh, remind you is uh, when you use bleach, make sure you use it's a plain bleach 
It's just a regular household plain bleach. It doesn't have any scent. And if you could also use uh, those uh, non-splash. So make sure like the bleach concentration is about five to 6%. Uh, since you are not using, you use it just as maintenance. Uh, so household bleach, it's a, uh, it will just do a fan, it will do a good job. Um, the other thing it's, uh, I do want to remind you, it's uh, believe it or not, bleach has its expiration date. So when you open the bleach and leave it open, like just the, even the cap is still on, then the bleach won't, won't be as effective uh, as it should be. So don't be surprised that you add a, a teaspoon of bleach into your barrel and it seems like, hey, I cannot smell the bleach. I don't think it's doing a clean, a good cleaning job. That's probably like your bleach is, uh, has already expired or something like that. And I'm still looking at the comments. Uh, so far, we got a lot of interest and a lot of uh, like co uh, compliments here. So thank you, mm -hmm. Tina and uh, uh, Krista. So you two did an excellent job and they are very happy with all the informative uh, information. And uh, we have to say we are very happy you like our presentation too. And also, I just post a link. It's our water, it's the Water Wednesday survey. So if you like our Water Wednesday series, uh, please uh, just go to that link to take the survey. Tell us uh, what you have learned and how we can improve uh, our Water Wednesday series. Uh, so something I do want to mention, it's uh, as UFI first extension, we will never ask any credit card information. So you go, you go to that link, you will see it will not ask any personal information. Just simply, it's uh, what you think of our Water Wednesday series. Uh, another comment, uh, like people were wondering, it's uh, how about uh, like they missed the beginning of the live session, um, so how they can rewatch the recording. So we will also post our recording on the YouTube channel. So you can find the YouTube channel also in the comment session or uh, even in the description. It has our YouTube link. Uh, it also has, a, a, we keep referring to the part one, our ring barrel basics, because uh, it's really provided the basics uh, what you need to know about the water quality, about the materials, etc. So it's very informative. We encourage you to go to our YouTube channel also to watch uh, that recording. And some also wondering, it's like, can how can they request the information? So also want to let you know we also post a Water Wednesday recap blog. So if you missed a session, you can uh, we we'll also put a few key points into our blog with the, the YouTube link. So you can also use that as a catch up. So I think that's all I have on my end. And again, if you like our videos, please give us a thumb up. And if you can take the survey, we will really appreciate that. And yeah, also, and oh, thank go you ahead. all so much for, I just want to say thank you for all of your questions and comments. We really appreciate it. And what is our next Water Wednesday, Yilin, for next week? That's what I was going to say. Awesome. Our next Water Wednesday, it's we have the pleasure to have Miss Tina back again. She will teach us how you can save water with Florida friendly plants. That's the question we ask all the time. It's like, what plants we can, uh, like, I just moved to Florida. What plants we can grow in Florida? So that's what's uh, Tina's Water Wednesday next week. So you, please uh, go, um, next week we change the structure a little bit. You will still be able to see us on Facebook Live, but you can see all the questions here because the Facebook and the Zoom, there uh, is about 10 seconds delay. If you want a direct interaction with uh, Miss Tia, you uh, excuse me, with Miss Tina, you can um, please uh, register the event. Uh, again, it's just uh, in the event session. Uh, you can click the link and to claim your free ticket. Then in that way, it will be more spontaneous interaction with the guest speaker. And the meanwhile, if you for uh, uh, if you forget to register, we'll still be available on Facebook Live and we will also be available on YouTube channel. So thank you again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys uh, next Wednesday. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Yilin. Bye, everyone. Thank you.